Simulation tools are often used interactively to explore performance issues. Gradually, we build up an intuition about how the building works. However, we might need to repeat our data mining as the model evolves or to apply those ideas to a different building type. Humans are not so great at consistently issuing sequences command, thus the need for automation. In this video, we focus on automating the workflow of running assessments and extracting data. Not the great edifices of scripting needed for stock modeling, but some basic agents suitable for small scale projects and limited resources. We're going to do this in the context of ESPR, which can be driven by a sequence of keystrokes and which also has some facilities to record the preferences for assessments to be carried out. Of course, other simulation tools also provide facilities like this, but their details will vary. You can find out more about driving ESPR on the Strategies website. So let's delve into Automation 101. Our first steps have little to do with coding scripts and quite a lot to do with imagination and strategy. The strategy of delaying investment in detail in our models or in our environmental controls applies equally well to automation. Don't rush to code. Live with the model long enough to build up that intuition of how the building works. And even more importantly, live with it long enough to get clues about its points of failure. So interactive explorations give us clues as to the when and the where and the what. And besides building that intuition, it provides clues as to the interactions that are actually going to be necessary for an automation agent to act on. We want to think beyond the usual suspects to metrics which might expose unintended consequences. These clues might allow us to adapt an existing set of automation agents, or they might suggest that we need to start from scratch. So what are some simple uses for automation? Well, as design ideas evolve, we have an interest in confirming that the building's still working well and that we identify new points of failure. When we make a step change in the model, we want confirmation that it's delivering what was imagined. And would this design apply in a different site or to a slightly different building? These are things worth automating but can we design automation agents that are flexible enough to deploy in these different kinds of situations? Remember, the deliverables from an automated process have multiple audiences. First, we want to give ourselves an early warning of opportunities and risks so that we can build a better story to pass on to others. The deliverables for these audiences might be subtly or significantly different. A bit of thought is needed into selecting the types of performance data and the forms of reporting. Thus, our automation agents might differ. How complex do we need to go with automation? Thing is, we might not need to automate the entire workflow to benefit from automation. The kind of script we could put together in a coffee break can deliver useful respite from tedium. In this video, we use some text files, some shell scripts. Of course, if you've got Python or Perl scripts, go with those. Let's start simply by leveraging the facilities inbuilt in the tool. ESPR can include the in the model description user directives about simulations to be carried out. They're named, and although they're used by the application when invoking the simulation engine, it's also possible to include as a directive in a command line invocation of the simulator or within a script. Keeping such command sequences in a text file can help us in the task of rerunning assessments as the model evolves. If we use the same naming convention within our scripts, then the relationships between the model and the automation scripts are easier to keep track of. 
The creation of automation agents tends to require that we be pedantic. Inevitably, to automate interactions with simulation tools or interventions in the reports that they generate requires that we manually carry out the task first. We have to record the sequences of actions required as well as archive the result of those actions so that we can test that the automation agents are actually doing what they're supposed to do. The more extensive the sequence of tasks, the more difficult it is to correctly capture. Therefore, multiple agents carrying out limited tasks is rather more in keeping with the idea of a coffee break approach. Although some practitioners want their scripts to run silently for debug purposes, it can be very helpful to scroll back through the sequence of scripted interactions to catch that missing keystroke. Of course, there's lots of options in scripts. We can pass them parameters to carry out simple logic within our scripts and use that to alter the selections that are invoked within the simulation tool. Experiment. Gradually build up your scripting skills. And one final observation. Simulation tools evolve, and this can break existing scripts. It's really important to document our scripts to help with updating them to match the tools.